From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van MP Presents. Memories. You know, we all have wonderful memories, don't we? Things that we kind of put in our minds and in our hearts. And uh, I couldn't help but think, just as we were coming on, about a memory that I had when we were in huge crusades, like 10,000 people in an arena or something like that, and we could look out and see everybody. Afterward, Jack and I would sign Bibles, you know, that kind of thing. I'll never forget, <laughs> one night, a little girl came up to me and she said, Are you Rexella? I said, <laughs> Yes, honey, I am. She said, Where's your daddy? <laughs> oh. I like that especially, where's your daddy? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> I have to admit, you don't look like my daddy. <laughs> you see this? They now call me Clark Stable. <laughs> no. But you know why I got this? I've only had it three weeks, so I could brush my wife's teeth. Oh, come day. on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... Daddy's really taking care of her. <laughs> now, that's a memory I'll never forget. <laughs> you know, friends, we do need to enjoy what we're doing and enjoy the day and know that the Lord is with us no matter what is happening out there. But as I pick up the newspapers, my heart goes out to people. We love people everywhere. And I've Amen. never seen anything like we've been seeing this year as far as storms and things like that. Oklahoma, Texas, brace for storms. I cannot imagine the forecasters as they have to warn the people to get into a safe place because of tornadoes. Storms roar across the heartland. Tornadoes flatten homes and cut power to thousands. I can't believe what's happening. I, as I say, in my lifetime, I've never seen so many happen. Well, that just happened May 20th going on. Again, this past month, weekend floods hit Houston at New Orleans. Oh, I can't believe it, what's happening. And then storm swamps New Orleans. It's just too bad they can't even control what's happening. As you see what they're trying to do there, paradise lost in the lava. Thousands still struggle to recover from the most destructive disaster to hit the big islands in decades. Oh, my, oh, my. What's happening with people around the world? Of course, that has to do with Hawaii's vo volcanic eruption. And lost in lava. Yes. Rash lava. of tornadoes touched down across Oklahoma and Texas. There they have it again. And now, friends, this morning, this morning, I picked up another newspaper, and it's the Wall Street Journal. Oklahoma takes stock after the twister. This just happened. You know, I really want Jack to try and explain some of these things. Oklahoma, what's happening around the world, not only here in the United States, but around the world. Jack, is this one of the big signs? Well, any sign is big, but this seems to be happening everywhere. Is this a sign pointing to the return of the Lord? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm warning you, get ready. When the Holy Spirit came to me August the 13th, two years ago, he said, you have been appointed and your wife, Rexella, has been appointed and both of you have been anointed and you are to now preach the message that Christ is about to return imminently soon to set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. And they're going to be all the signs. Now, there are exactly 10,385 prophecies. I've got every one of them memorized. You're going to hear many of them. But this is one of the great prophecies. Every single prophecy that Christ is about to return is here. My. Now listen to this one. All about all the weather. Luke 21, 25. Jesus said, 
The earth shall be signs of the sun, the moon, the stars, and on the earth the stress of nations. Men's hearts failing them for fear, looking after those things which are coming to pass from in the earth from space. And when all that happens, then shall they see Jesus, the Son of Man, coming in all of his glory to set up heaven on earth. Heaven's going to be transferred to earth. Matthew 24, verse 14. And heaven's going to be here. And Jesus says, my father is going to be the head. It's, it's his kingdom. But I will run it for him. And I'm going to be the king of the kings and lord of the lords. And the Holy Spirit is going to be the paraclete. That's what he's called in the Bible, which is comforter. And what's he going to produce in that great thinking of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And he says, against such, there's no law. What he's actually saying, against this, there is no Ten Commandments that can equal it. When you got those fruits of the Spirit, you've got everything. You don't need the commandments to tell you how to live. Wow. And every sign is here. Get ready. Jesus is coming, and he's going to set up the kingdom of heaven and earth. We'll see more of that today. Mm -hmm. First, he's coming in the rapture to take us home yeah. seven years later back on earth. And in the fulfillment of the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Rex How wonderful Hallelujah. that'll be, Jack. Well, we're going to be going on to another huge issue. I almost want to cry when I think about it. It's the mental issues that we have. Did you know that there are, um, in the, the uh, work statue right now, $200 billion each year is lost by the uh, people who employ uh, others because of their absentee mental health problems. Out of the newspaper, I just got this. $200 billion every year in employee absentee. They can't come. I just can't stand it today. And because of some of the health issues, I'm afraid it goes farther. There's a lot of suicide out there, friends. Take a look at this. Fathers become advocates after losing sons to suicide. Oh, oh my. How we wish that we could reach out to them personally. Suicide. ER visits for kids. For kids. So our emergency rooms visits for children who attempted suicide or had thoughts of suicide. I'm going to tell you how to overcome that in just a, a few minutes. Suicide. Addiction death surge. While well, they're turning to, to, you know, some kind of opioid in order to take care of their, their, uh, they're down times. We want something to make us feel better. My, oh, my. And from World Magazine, America's overdose. From opioids to benzo. Drug anxiety intensifies. You know, we do have something out there that's really, really beyond any of our, our comprehensions and then going on. America's drug crisis now includes so many of the prescriptions, so many prescriptions taken for anxiety. And as the death toll grows, the underlying problem remains unaddressed. Well, again, here's another one I just picked up this morning, and it's from the Wall Street Journal, if you will. Take a look. This morning, opioid trial to kick off in Oklahoma. Now, this is what they're saying. Case will test whether drug makers can be blamed for state's addiction crisis. You know, friends, people are desperate. They're so down. They just, uh, and young people turning to suicide, even younger ones, they don't have to do that. They can overcome because of having peace in their heart and joy in their life and knowing that this is not it. We're not going to be living in this state that we're in right now. The Lord is coming back. Jack, I love that. Oh. The Lord's coming back. There are so many things we can name. Marijuana, heroin, 
But the worst thing is AIDS because of all the sexual sin that's going on. AIDS is killing people. And you know, you can't be practicing sexual sins and seeing God at the end of the road. You know, I talked last week about what's going on in the clergy. All the priests, but I'm not just holding them guilty. I'm a Protestant. I'm dropping that title because I don't like being a protestant anymore. That's how it spells. I don't protest any Christian group anymore. I'm trying to draw all Christians together. And when Jesus returns, that's what he's going to do. He's going to settle all of these problems. And there's going to be no more AIDS, no more drugs when Jesus is here. And he sets up heaven above on earth beneath. And it's called the kingdom of heaven. And it's going to be the kingdom of heaven as a Christian kingdom for all the world. We're going to get rid of all the denominations. Do you know that this Bible, whenever it talks about the end of the world, I said it last week, but I got to repeat it. There is no such thing as the end of the world. A lot of kooks that call themselves Bible expositors and teachers always put, even in this Bible, they mistranslate it as the end of the world in oh, Matthew no. 24. Uh, four. No, sir. It's the end of the church age. Dispensation number six. If you're dispensationalist, get and you're not getting my book, the A to Z of Bible prophecy. Number six is the end of the church. How is that possible? We go up in the rapture. Who goes up in the rapture? Are you listening? I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep and be dead, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, 11 one hundredths of a second. Now, here it is. The dead in Christ shall arise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord near, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wait a minute. We're going to be with him forever. But that doesn't end there. That's the point They've just gone through all of the rewards. There are going to be five different rewards. And they come back, and Christ is preparing the holy city. Now, this is exciting. It is 1,500 miles wide, long, and high. Every human being who's ever been born again will be living in that place for 1,000 years, called the millennium. And at that time, all the Jews of the world are going to get saved. Jesus said salvation is of the Jews. Oh, how the Father loved the Jews. God said, I didn't choose you because you were more in number than any other people. You were the fewest. But because I loved you, Israel. Right. Right. Oh, you anti-Semitic so-called Christians, get right with God. Mm -hmm. What else did you say, Father? Israel is my beloved, the apple of my eye. Israel is my fiance. I'm betrothed to her. Israel is my wife. And I'm going to give Israel an everlasting name. When Jesus returns after the rapture, he's called up. The church is finished forever. There's no more church. Now he brings back his church former church to set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. And it won't be called church, it'll be called probably a kingdom. As to the Christian kingdom, there'll be no more denominations. That's sickening. All fighting one another. He says, we're going to have one thing, Christianity. And all shall be saved. All the Jews are coming to Christ. That's the prophecy of the Bible. Their Messiah. Yeah. You know what? The Bible says that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 38 Old Testament men wrote every book, Jews. 11 of the 12 apostles were Jews. Everything in this book was written by Jews except the book of Luke and Acts. Luke was a Greek. And he wrote Luke and that book, X. 
Otherwise, you do not have a King James Version. You have a Doi Asian Catholic Version. You have a Jewish Bible on your hand, and yet you anti-Semitics are running around blasting the Jews all the You don't know what Jesus is. You don't know what Christianity is. Jesus said, salvation is of the Jews. And I came forth as the Holy Spirit planted me in the body of a Jewish virgin, Mary. Get your Bible straight. Absolutely. You know, Jack, it's wonderful that you're talking about thy kingdom come. Of course, like I said, as Christians, we go up in the rapture when Jesus has, you know, come up and we're there seven years. Our lives are examined. We come back to him, with him to rule and reign on the earth. Wait, well, honey, oh, we lay oh, all of our rewards, the crowns of Jesus' crowns feet. And Jesus you know what he says feet. when we hit the ground? Yes. And they've come back on that great ship that he's created. He's been working 2,000 years to build it. When he left you, he said, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. And now he says, all on board, let's go. That's right. <laughs> After the seven years, the seven-year war has taken place. Armageddon is the last scene. And by the time he gets to the earth with his people, it's over. Uh -huh. He kept us from it. He, now he comes back, and it's finished. Amen. What a Savior. Oh, yes, Jack, what a Savior. Well, you know, friends, our Vice President, Vice President Pence, was at West Point. I could not believe what he had to say. Take a look, please, at this headline. This is what he said. The world is a dangerous place. He was speaking to those there, West Point graduates. And he said, you should expect to see combat. Wow. My wow. Own. The world is a dangerous place. You know, Jack Finippi has been saying this for a long time. We can expect some of the things that are just around the corner, right, Jack? Roxanne and I, when we were first married, what a team we were. Just almost kids. And we went to 800 different cities. 800 one-week church crusades. And she would sing, I'd play the accordion and preach. And on Friday night, I'd always give my life story from nightclubs to Christ. My dad raised me in a Belgian cafe. And I was an accordionist there as a little boy. Dad got saved and he said, I don't want this kind of life anymore. Started to pray five hours a day. Went to college at 40 years of age. Graduated, was ordained, became a minister. And then he and I went together into churches playing accordion duets. But something happened. Oh, I'll tell you. It was just unbelievable. At one of the rallies, I saw this beautiful Rexella. It wasn't long until we were married. And not only did we hold the church crusades, but it got so big I didn't know what to do. I had 1,500 invitations on the waiting list for churches across the world. And I called Billy Graham. When I was with Billy Graham, he said to me, Jack, I never heard anyone preach like you preach. And I'm going to recommend you to all the Youth for Christ rallies in America. That's what he did. And going through college, all the youth rallies, as they paid me for Saturday nights, was able to pay my way through school. And I'll tell you, I called Billy Graham then when I had 1,500 invitations. What do I do? He says, do what I do. Citywide, get all the pastors together in every city. And I did it. And we had 247 crusades with 40 million attendants. Thousands of pastors, 50,000 sponsoring it. And millions coming to Jesus. Oh, what a time it was. We've had a great time. But I said this, preaching the message 65 years ago. I said, here's what you can expect. Russia and China getting together. North Korea. You will see Iran. In fact, look at this. It's exactly what the vice president was talking about. Europe wants U.S. against Iran. Escalation as tensions mount. Deploy. U.S. to deploy force in the Mideast to deter Iran. Muslims. Iranian commander, U.S. forces must leave the region. The war that Pence is talking about is the one that's going to happen, World War III, and Russia and China and Gomer, Germany, and Tagarma, Turkey, and all the Muslim nations are all involved against the English-speaking peoples. It is getting ready, but 
I'm talking to you Christians. Don't worry about it. When this thing is about to break, the rapture, preachers now are talking against the rapture, calling it trash and garbage. If your pastor does that, get out of that church. That's what that church has become. Hmm. Or get rid of the pastor. The rapture is the greatest thing in the world. I talked about it last week. I want to repeat it. I show you a mystery. What? We shall not all sleep, be dead, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound. Now, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and the living shall be changed. That's every believer, dead and living. For this corruptible, the dead must put on incorruption. This mortal living must put on immortality. And when this happens, they're all going to sing, Hallelujah, O oh, death, where's thy sting? They're never going to die. Jesus, when he comes back with his people after the end of the seven-year rapture, and they're all rewarded to lay their crowns at Jesus' feet, Christ says, as they get off of that great ship. And you know what that ship says? Revelation 21, 2. Oh, this is something. The new Jerusalem, the holy city. He's not going to set up his kingdom in Rome or any other. It's going to be Jerusalem because God loves the Jew. Amen. And it's all going to happen so soon. The Holy Spirit said to me just last week, two years ago, I called you and Rexella into this and said, you are to tell the whole world. We're doing it. Seven billion, six hundred million. Now he said, start winning them, and we're going to do it. The billion souls crusade for Christ. The next two weeks, we're going to shock you. We're going to see a billion souls, billions to give to Jesus Amen. when he returns. Amen. And I'm going to ask you starting next week to help me. Well, you know, Jack, we want this teaching to be taught in our churches, to our families, to our friends. But actually, we need to apply this to ourselves. Some of you may be on drugs. Some of you may be very depressed. Some of you just, oh, another day I hate to get out of bed. But you can have a, a wonderful time if you'll only accept Jesus into your heart because he brings forgiveness of anything you don't, you've done, you don't want there. He helps you to overcome obstacles. He'll walk with you every moment of every day. How good it is to be forgiven and be his child and ready for heaven. When he comes, you're ready if you have him in your heart. Will you pray this wonderful prayer, asking Jesus to be your Savior? Jack's going to pray that prayer right now. Oh, I used to sing in Sunday school, Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sin away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. How is that? Through receiving him. Amen. Do it, Lord. I want that kind of peace. I want that kind of joy. I want to miss World War III through the rapture. Oh, Spirit of God. Thank you for speaking to my heart through Dr. Van Ippy today. Holy Spirit, show me now and do the work for me. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You're the only way of salvation. 804 times the Bible says so. 804 times. Hmm. And I believe the Bible. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood that flowed from those wounds. For the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, saves us from all sin. All sin. Jesus, I receive you now. Cleanse me and save me. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? I trust that you did. If you did, you just became ready for heaven and a child of God. He'll walk with you every single day. Amen. And I'll send you this in the mail. First steps in a new direction, please write to me. I'd love to hear from you and send this to you as soon as I do. It'll help you in your new walk with the Lord. And now, friends, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the offer that we have. And it's entitled, whoa, Awake America 2020, 
And we need to wake up, don't we, friends? We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. I'm trusting that you'll write for the video. Awake America. There's so much that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with the stress that people are going through, what it results in. We're going to be dealing with a war in the Middle East that's coming very, very soon. Yes. Very important. So please write. I'll be happy to send you Awake America 2020. Now here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you right and get that. Awake America 2020. I want to leave you with a very good thought. Are you angry at somebody? You know, revenge gets you even with your enemy. Okay. But forgiveness puts you above him. How wonderful Amen. it is to yeah. have forgiveness in your heart for those who perhaps have hurt you. But when we walk with the Lord, we can forgive. All right, we're going to look forward to being at your home again next week. And until then, always remember that God cares for you. And so do we so very, very much. Amen. God bless you as you Walk with him. Bye-bye.